Hi, thanks for tuning in to the Rubed Support YouTube channel. My name is Gavin Garley, and today we're going to talk about configuring end to end Kerberos on Steelhead and Steel Fusion devices. We're going to do a quick overview of end to end Kerberos with Steelhead and Steel Fusion. We're going to review the required steps to get this configured. We're going to provide some additional resources that you may want to review if you're going to configure end to end Kerberos. And finally, we'll demo the steps required to get this configured. Windows SMB 1, 2, and 3, as well as MAPI protocols, use either NTLM or Kerberos for authentication purposes. As Kerberos is more secure than NTLM authentication, it has historically been required in secure Windows environments. However, that's changing and it's becoming a default requirement with not only new Windows OS's, but also being required on older OS's due to security patches from Microsoft. One of these examples is UNC hardening. If you are working with an OS that either default requires or has been patched and thus requires UNC hardening, you will need to enable end-to-end -end Kerberos. Here are the steps to enable end-to-end -end Kerberos. First of all, in Active Directory, we're going to create a user for Kerberos replication. If you do not manage your Active Directory infrastructure, you'll need to interface with the domain admin for this step. Next, we'll delegate control to that replication user so it has the appropriate permissions to replicate Kerberos information. Again you'll need to work with the domain admin if you don't manage the Active Directory infrastructure. Next we're going to add the service account that we've created in Active Directory and configured properly to the service account page on the Steelhead or Steel Fusion device. And finally we'll enable the Kerberos option on the appropriate optimization page. Here are some additional resources you can review if you want more in-depth information on end-to-end -end Kerberos. Article S25759 is a great place to start. Article S26185 discusses UNC hardening in more detail. And finally, Article S22049, the Windows Qualification Guide, is where you'd go to determine what version of Rios you need to be running in order to optimize the version of Windows you have in your environment. All right, let's jump into the demo. So before we start with the configuration, let's do a quick baseline on how things look with Kerberos disabled. We're going to jump into reports, current connections. We're going to filter down on port 445. And the client that I'm testing with is IP 1.1.1.99. And the remote resource that I'm going to connect to is 1.1.1.10. So let me go to run. And I'm going to connect to my remote PC called remote PC. All right, so here we are connected to remote PC C$. I'm going to do a quick update on the report of current connections. And here you see we have a connection between 1.1.1.99 and 1.1.1.10. So let's jump into the system logs real quick and take a closer look at what's occurred here. So you'll see these notice messages for 1.1.1.9 connecting to 1.1.1.10 right here. And it says requesting downgrade from Curve 5 to NTLM. Now it's normal Windows OS behavior to attempt Kerberos first and fall back to NTLM. It's normal steelhead behavior by default 
to downgrade from curb 5 to NTLM because we don't have Kerberos Curber configured. So let's get this configured. So here we are in my domain controller. Now you are going to either need to have domain administrative rights for this or you're going to need to have a domain administrator help you with these next two steps. We're going to go down to start and we're going to go into Active Directory Users and Computers, henceforth referred to as ADUC. In ADUC, we're going to go down to Users and we're going to add the user for our replication service account. We'll go to New, we'll go to User. And our user's first name is going to be uh, Curb. And Curb's last name, it'll be Rebel. And Curb is going to log in with a name of Curb Rebel. Now this can be really any name that you want it to be. And we're going to give curb REPL a password. And we're going to confirm his password. And we're going to tell curb REPL that he can't change his password. And let's just say it never expires. You just defer to your domain admin for what they want to set this to. And we'll click Finish. All right, so we've got Curb Repl. Now we need to set Curb Repl's permissions appropriately for Kerberos replication. So we're going to go in ADUC to our domain name right here, which in my case is nh2k8dom.lab. And this object in ADUC, we're going to right click and we're going to go to Delegate Control. And this is our delegation control wizard. And we're going to go next. And this delegation control wizard, we need to be assigning rights on the curb REPL account. And we'll go next. So for this first window, we're going to actually create a custom task to delegate and go next. And on the second window here for delegate control of, we're going to keep this default, this folder, existing objects in this folder, and creation of new objects in this folder. And we'll go next. Now we're actually setting the permissions for general and we're going to scroll down just a little bit. And curb REPL is going to get replicating directory changes, as well as replicating directory changes all. And we're going to go next and finish. So we are done with the domain configuration side of things, we're going to swing back over to our still or still fusion device and complete that configuration. All right, on our server side, still or still fusion device, we're going to go to optimization and under optimization, you go to active directory and down to the very bottom, you have the option for service accounts. So let's go there. Now in service accounts, first of all, you have a delegation user option with NTLM. Now you, you don't need this option assuming you joined in Windows 2008 or later, which we've done because that is best practice. So we're going to skip that top part and scroll down. And here under Kerberos, we have the option to add a replication user. So let's do that. And our Active, Direct Active Directory domain name is, of course, nh2k8dom.lab. 
the user is in the same domain and of course our username is Kerbrup. And I'm going to input Kerbrup as password. And I'm going to confirm Kerbrup as password. And we're going to add that in. So, as you can see, under Replication Users, in NH2K8 DOM.lab, we have added the appropriately configured Curb Repl account named Curb Repl. Now we just need to enable, enable Kerberos support. So let's go back to optimization. We're going to go to SMB23 for our purpose. And under signing, you'll see there's an option to enable Kerberos authentication support. Let's tag that box. And finally, let's apply this. Don't forget to save to disk. So let's go to reports, current connections. I'm going to do a quick update. Again, we're looking for 1.1.1.99. There's nothing here. So let's connect to our remote PC again called remote PC. And there we go. Connected to C dollar. Let's do an update on our current connections. And you can see that 1.1.1.99 is now connected to 1.1.1.10 over port 445. More importantly, let's go back to reports, let's go back to our system logs, and let's see what's different. So here you see a log 1.1.99 communicating to 1.1.1.10, except instead of downgrading from curb 5 to NTLM, we are now successfully replicating the keys for remote PC. I hope you enjoyed the video for configuring and Kerberos. If you do find this content helpful, please subscribe and also feel free to comment. Have a great day everybody.